was a morning variety show and there was Marty the monster who was this big monster bear who, if you ever want to look up, oh, let's watch. Let's. This is horse. This is up your alley. I can't up wait it. to see it. I can't up wait to see it. it. Right there. Wait, is this the bear that gets attacked by the kangaroo? Hold the phone, buddy. Hold okay. the phone. Okay. Yeah, the early bird show, so they'd have like, you know, like a musical act would be in there or they'd have like a remote control car race between kids. Sometimes there was mm-hmm. a skateboard competition. Um, but then they would throw to like, and now we're going back to the Transformers. And so they'd show yeah. you like one ad break sort of worth of Transformers. And so you had to be um, on your toes with the pauses and, and and all that sort of good stuff. But on one fateful day, right there, on the early bird show, there'd, there'd, there'd always be sort of a, um, you know, like a ranger Pete that would bring on animals and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, don't work with children or animals is the, uh, oh, my our buddy Chris Fresh sent me this about a month ago, and he was like, "You got to see it. You're gonna love it." And he could not have been more right. I love this so much. All right, let's try to do a commentary for those on the audio pod. So the first thing you need to know is there is a yoked kangaroo on screen, the buffest kangaroo you maybe have ever seen. So this guy Fritz. That's what I. It was like, yeah, Fritz from someone, some farm or whatever. He's like a pretty surly looking big dude with a big mo. And this kangaroo is standing up against him, leaning on him, and is like only like six inches shorter. Like it, and, it it's and like Fritz he's the kangaroo. It's like the kangaroo is drunk mm-hmm. and trying to stand up off Fritz. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Daryl Cotton, um, R.I.P., great man, great performer. Um, in his acid wash denim jacket, trying to interview Fritz and the kangaroo. The red kangaroo, is it? Oh, yeah, they used to only live about that long in the wild. But they, of oh. course, they've been known to live, they've been known to live up to And Marty the monster is getting dangerously yeah, close to this kangaroo. And then the lady host, Marie, she's saying, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Yeah, we do too. Actually, Marie's going to stand back there. She's a little bit. Come on, Marie. Come on. You've met rags before. Oh, Fritz. Come on, Marie. You've You've met met rags before. And then rags, dude. I don't know if you noticed this. Rags, immediately upon hearing him say that, kicks Fritz. Double kick. Two kangaroo feet to the nuts. Like a fatality. Yeah, from Mortal Kombat. And look at, um, Look at it. It's blurry, but look at Daryl Cotton's face. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> hey. Whoa. He's been on a few TV shows, hasn't he? He's been on a lot. He's been in quite a few films. We did a a film called Darlings of the Gods with him recently, which is going to be on later in the year. Very affectionate. And, uh, very and affectionate. <laughs> Dude, and Rags the Kangaroo cannot take his eyes off of Marty the Monster. He's and Marty Monster's just, he's just leaning into it. Yeah, and, and Rags has like Terminator killer vision on this dude in a suit. How would you describe Marty the Monster to the audio listeners? Um, a low budget Jim Henson creature, uh, almost like, um, like a bad HR puffin stuff. That's better. Yeah. That's way better. Yeah. And like, he's been Mr. Potato headed with the wrong eyeballs and mouth and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he's I will like a striped shirt. I, I will, um, I, I'll get a timestamp for those that are like, just listen to the podcast, but then just want to watch this bit. I'll put it like a, a timestamp in the, the podcast show notes that will fast forward you just straight to this moment. Yeah. Good call. Oh, here it comes. He's like punching him now. Like, yeah. And then he gets him in a UFC death grip and Marty, the monster starts to go down, dude. He is. He's got him. Here it goes. <laughs> Daryl Cotton is counting Marty the Monster out. <laughs> what? So this giant kangaroo has like deformed Marty the Monster's head with this like 
like I, I was going to say camel clutch, but a kanga clutch horse. Yeah, kanga clutch. And has got him on the ground in the uh, early bird show octagon of sorts. <laughs> My favorite and part is coming up here in a second. Marty's he biting him. <laughs> you can hear Marty screaming. Yep. That must be the end of a good career. Rags is not having it. Look, and he's he's not done. Marty's grabbing his head. <laughs> and my favorite part here is in a second. They're going to try and uh, calm Rags down. Oh, look, another nut kick. With oh, my God. So we can, we can see behind the fourth wall now. Uh-huh. Like, things have gone so astray that the camera now isn't on the set. You can now see all the crew people in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're okay. Look, they're, they're giving him white bread to calm him down. Here you go. Get a little slice of bread. And he seems he seems like he's calmed down. Like, yeah, this... But no. Why does Marty, Marty go back up? This is, uh, this is all 100% Marty's fault. I blame Marty 100%. He's antagonizing this poor kangaroo. If a kangaroo got me in that grip and took me down to the ground, brother, I'm out. I'm done. I'll see you later. I am, like head off cigarette out yeah. i'm out of here like <laughs> having a cocktail like peace yeah peace the three million kangaroos are shopping here in australia and, and look he's giving them like pets on his side but do you Rags. hear the ne- do you hear the negging that just went on mm-hmm. fritz mm-hmm. just said over 300 kangaroos get shot each year in australia so just like watch your back rags. To be shot. A lot of the kids worry about it, Daryl. Because in some areas they're Marty, no! Look as soon as oh. Rags sees Oh my god, it's on. He actually went around and said, Hi! What is this dude on? <laughs> this is like and Saturday, the whole time, Saturday rags morning is still, raw. Still got a mouthful of white bread, too. You're only a trouble. Marty, go sit down with Dixie. Can you see the person in the background that's just laughing his ass off? How could you not at this point? <laughs> For a long time, we weren't allowed to keep these at Animal Park. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, we weren't allowed to keep these at animal parks. I I can't work out why. (laughs) Look, he's about to see him over this guy, over Fritz's head. Let me at him. Oh, he took a swing. Fritz! Mm -hmm. Now's the time to cut to the Transformers. It sure is, but they just keep going. They know they have gold on their hands. You could all, a de- a de- oh! oh, bro, I worry about Fritz's future after all these nut kicks. There's not going to be any little Fritz's. <laughs> Get him a bit of bread. Now that dude that was laughing is like in the line of sight and watch him. <laughs> he's on the ta- watch him like he's laughing and he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I've got a animal kingdom. All right. But I'll tell you what, a bit of egg with it. Yeah, no egg, just a bit of bread will do, Marty. Oh, get that shit out of my face. <laughs> he doesn't even want the bread from Marty. Hits him with a total haymaker. I'm going to have to head back because next week you're going to come in with your Boris and Beryl are nine years old. And if you can think of a nice present, 
I'll bring both Boris. I'll give him Tracy Beryl. Kira. And <laughs> Beryl. Beryl. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Look at I'll bring Boris and Beryl into the early bird car, right. if you like. All right. I'm going to take Rags back. I'm going to do it. I bet you go through a few shirts, Fritz. Like I that. do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he's just had a nightmare on Elm Street. He sure has. Oh. You know what the messed up? Oh, one more for good luck. Um, you know, the, the, the messed up thing about this is even having seen this, and I'll tell you, when Chris sent this to me, I watched it. I made Jesse watch it, and then I probably watched it two more times on my own. I still want to hang out with a kangaroo. It has not deterred me from wanting to hang out with a kangaroo. Zero buys, buddy. I've um I've seen him bounce past, and um you just do your own thing, Skippy. Oh, tri- I, I, you would hear the brake if I was driving down the road, and a kangaroo bounced past. You would hear the brake squealing, and then the sound of me getting my wheelchair out of the trunk because I'm hunting that Joker down. Well, I remember going after. Being in America for a lot of time, when I was, I, I didn't live here yet, but I was bouncing back and forth. And I just got off a, you know, like a, a two, three month stint here. Got back to Australia and went to my friend Nick Cody's wedding. And he got married like about 90 minutes out of Melbourne. Mm-hmm. So, sort of out where there's, you know, farms and stuff. And, you know, very classic Australian landscaped like place. And we're walking over to where the ceremony is going to be. And there's just like in the next field, there's this kangaroos frolicking. And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe it is how they say. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> maybe things are just this clichely Australian. <laughs> and I I've, I've just haven't noticed. Um, you know, when we were driving from here to Chicago for celebration, We stopped somewhere, I want to say it was in Tennessee, and there was a huge billboard that said, um, pet a a kangaroo, and it had a kangaroo on it. And we took the exit because we needed gas. Ah! Sure enough, enough, there's a place across the street from the gas station that advertised being being able to hang out with kangaroos, but they were closed. And then I was like, well... I guess we got to look on the way back because uh, if they're open, we're stopping. And, and then we totally forgot. Interesting business model. Yeah. Have a giant billboard. And then because, you know, it was like a Tuesday or something. No, but just like, I reckon I can make a living out of. Um... Putting people in danger. <laughs> no, just like people want to pet a kangaroo in the middle of America. Okay. It's just so it, it's, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm, 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 I'm hitching myself to that start. I, hey, if I could secure the kangaroo. Oh, you're halfway I might, there. I might get into that business. Okay. Fine. Fine. The other crazy thing about that clip pause is how are they letting this happen to the kangaroo? It doesn't seem great for the kangaroo, does it? Like, not for nothing. The handler, he slaps that kangaroo in the face several times. And and maybe that's how they deal. I, I don't know. But yeah. it's, it's, it's not a good optic. It's not. Not a good optic. But, horse, I love a good segue. Speaking of optics, this is a very good optic. The Adventures of Tebow, a tale of magic and suspense. To check out this and all 26 episodes of Star Wars Year by Podcast, join the Steel Wars Patreon for just $3, where you'll be regaled by myself and Blue Harvest's Hawes Burkhart as we go through Star Wars history year by year. $3 